Hey everyone, Tony again with another day trading video lesson. I hope you're having a great day so far and a good week. Um, so far, it's been a pretty slow week in the small cap world. It's been a pretty slow past two weeks, really. Um, and right now is kind of the time where the market likes to weed out the disciplined traders away from the undisciplined traders. The ones who are disciplined are the ones who can stay patient and wait for solid setups and most importantly adapt to the current market are the ones who are really succeeding right now. While the ones who are too aggressive, who cannot adapt and just don't know what they're doing are the ones who are taking so many unnecessary losses and just destroying their accounts. So I'm here to help you do your best in adapting to the current market. So we're gonna talk about some things about the current market and we're gonna talk about my trades today on uh, GHSI and OVID and just some overall thoughts on the current market and how to best live in this current market. So stay tuned for that and we'll get right into my screen share. Alrighty guys, so here we are on my screen share. Now if you have any questions on what platforms I use, what scanners I use and stuff like that, there is an FAQ section down in the description. Just scroll all the way down and you'll see it and you can get some good answers on my platforms, my scanners and everything in between. Um, so like I was saying right now, um, the market is kind of being shaken up. It, it's not nearly as bullish as we have seen. And something that I've noticed is that it seems like we've kind of changed our trend and the mornings are really short biased. We're seeing lots of stongs look great in pre-market, but then they just have terrible market opens and they turn into all day fades. The ones that can kind of hold up, hold their bullish trend are the ones that later on in the day have end of day squeezes. And um, GHSI was a very good example of that. So it kind of seems like that we need to change how we trade and adapt and not so much focus on going long in the morning, but just watching what is strong throughout the morning. And then the ones that can stay bullish, then we take those trades in the midday and afternoon because those are the ones that tend to have end of day squeezes and you can profit off those. So just the main thing is that you don't really wanna be caught in, in a lot of these all day fades. We're seeing lots of all day fades right out of the market open, Yesterday we had a really bad one, PSTV, that one had a nasty offering and it crushed a lot of longs. Today we had a few all day fades like AIM. Now I'm not saying that you can't make money in the morning off these, but you have to be very quick and you have to understand that overall these are going to be all day faders and these are primarily a short setup. So you can see AIM broke the pre-market lows, faded all day. I think VIVE did it too. VIVE. I mean, this one was just very weak overall. I think MDY, yeah, this one looked very great in pre-market, but then it just had such a weak open, faded all day. But the one that, you know, kind of held its trend overall was GHSI, and this is the one that I traded. So let me just break down my trade on GHSI. Um, this one was on my watch list. This is one that I talked about in the Trade Buddy webinar this morning. And this one has been on a bullish uptrend for the past, you know, three days now and has a very nice breakout on the daily chart, which happened later on in the afternoon today. So GHSI, um, some of the main things I was kind of looking at this was that, okay, you know, it has volume in pre-market and like the number one thing that it needs to do is overall it's gonna to need to hold that previous day high level around 69 cents. However, because, you know, this pop here was a bit over exaggerated, like I chose to say, okay, well, even if it can't hold that exact level, if this can hold the overall 68-ish line, then it still looks very bullish. So, you know, market opened and it had a very quick morning spike, which was kind of expected. If you look at the past few days, uh, this thing loves to morning spike. It had a very big morning spike on the 20th. It ran from 50 cents up to 60 cents. And the next day it ran from 55 cents up to 63 cents. And then today, you know, it, it's just repeating that same pattern, but it's losing steam over time because now people are catching on to the fact that, you know, it spikes every single day. Anyways, one of the main things I was looking for in terms of this trade was that I wanted to see it overall 
hold that 68 cent support because if it could do that then it has overall like a bullish chart and it has potential to test that breakout up near 77 and 78 cents so you know i was watching this one um and i chose to take a few starter positions around 69.5 right near VWAP right here, underneath VWAP, just risking underneath this pre-market low. We had this morning sell-off, and this, I mean, honestly, just looked exactly like the price action that we had this morning, where it had a morning spike, it tried to hold VWAP, and it took out all the stops underneath, and then just, just bounced right back, and then just squeezed out all the sellers. So, you know, when I saw this, I wasn't really too worried, Overall, it was holding above my risk, and that's all that really mattered. And the main thing I noticed is that like this just looked like a potential short trap as long as it could hold that overall support. It bounced back up, reclaimed VWAP, and that's when I chose to add a bit more shares around like 71 cents. And overall, my profit target was around 77 cents up there. So I had a trade plan beforehand, and I just, you know, I stuck to the plan. We had a breakout and hit a high of 75 cents. And at this point, um, it went into a long, long consolidation. And one of the main things I was using was just a simple fact that, okay, you know, as long as it holds previous resistance as support around 72 cents, then this still has very good potential to, you know, just squeeze into the highs. And, you know, it did look very weak and it was very tiresome to have to hold this all morning. But that happens sometimes and you can't really exit the trade just because it's taking too long. The ones who can't hold on for so long are the ones who will find themselves time and time again um, not able to, you know, lock in those profits when it hits their target. They stop out too soon and they see, wow, you know, if I had just stayed in the trade, then I would have made money. So, you know, just some notes about this consolidation. Uh, we had one more kind of short trap here. I mean, this is why I don't really like to have my stop right under VWAP in certain situations. And in a situation like GHSI, because it had not hit my overall profit target, I didn't really move my stop up that much. My stop was still down underneath 68 cents. And for me, when I trade... I usually have this mentality of it either hits my target or hits my stop. I don't like to mess with my stop in between. The only time I raise my stop is when it breaks over my profit target and then I raise my stop into the green. But because this had never hit my initial profit target, it didn't really make sense to raise the stop quite yet. And all this action here was basically just all of the longs who had their stop too tight. They all got stopped out. It caught support and then it just reclaimed and held you up again. And you can see we do have this kind of gradual descending wedge breakout. Um, overall, had this nice trend line. When it broke that trend line, it got some volume. And now because we did have this very long consolidation, now because we did have this kind of long consolidation and a pretty obvious trend line to break, I did choose to buy into this strength and I essentially added into my size right around 726. So, you know, once I saw the volume flooding in, I chose to buy into the strength, added in some size into 726. And just because one thing I've noticed too in the current market is that these stocks aren't really moving as much as we expect. So it seems almost more worthwhile and less risky to use more size and kind of reduce your profit target because then overall you still make the same amount of money because you're using more size. However, because these stocks aren't really doing as much as we expect, we don't have to have these huge profit targets. And that's something that's working really well for me. Um, you can try that out, see how it works for you. You don't have to do it, but it's just like right now because these stocks aren't running 50, 100%, it doesn't really make sense to use lower size and have an extreme profit target. It seems more worth it seems more worthwhile to use more size, but just go for those tiny moves, lock in those gains, and move on to the next stock, only until the market kind of regains that bullish strength. So, 
One thing I did do wrong with GHSI is I definitely sold it too soon. Um, and this is kind of just because I was getting a bit too itchy with this long consolidation and me having a bit more size. And I chose to lock in half my profits immediately at around the 77 mark. And I got that level from the 30 minute chart. And basically you can see the top around here, around 77 cents. And I chose to lock in half my profits there. And then one thing I really should have done um, was just use the simple fact that, you know, as long as previous resistance holds support, this can definitely break out higher. And like I was thinking that initially, like as long as it holds over 75 cents overall, then this is still in a very bullish uptrend and there's no real reason to lock all of my shares out yet. But then I was thinking, you know what? The market hasn't really been too strong for longs. I just want to lock in the rest of my size at 67.5. Uh, so I sold the rest average around 767. And, you know, just like I thought, it kept up trending and hit a high of around 80 cents. So, you know, sold too soon. Not a perfect trader. Um, I should have stuck to the overall plan I had initially. Uh, that could just be a characteristic of me using it a bit more size than usual and just me not being patient once the trend was actually confirmed. So overall, still walked away green and uh, it was a decent trade. So that moves me on to OVID. Now, I didn't personally trade OVID. Um, however, I do want to talk about the potential trade that was there. And the main trade I want to talk about is that kind of midday bounce that you can see off of $3. Now this is a pretty common pattern that we have seen more recently, just because lots of these stocks in the morning are dominated by shorts. And essentially all this was, was just using previous resistance as new support. Like the way that you would have played this bounce is just the simple fact that you would buy off that $3 support and you would lock in profits into VWAP. You could choose to sell half into VWAP and then hold the rest like just in case it can like retest the high of day, but we really haven't like seen stocks do that too often. So it might just be better just to buy into that $3 support and sell it into that VWAP and a tiny bit above it. Now, one thing that would have helped you recognize this trade was the stochastics. Now, I really don't use indicators that much at all. However, when it comes to these midday squeezes, it seems to work really well and essentially this is just a classic stochastic divergence where we can see overall the price action made a lower high. However, the stochastics made a higher low. And having that higher low happen when you have a previous resistance level as support is usually a very good odd of success to have it squeeze into that view up. So I just want to talk about that pattern real fast. I didn't trade it, but we had some members in the chat room trade it pretty well. So just want to give you guys that that pattern there too. All right, so like I said, um, the main thoughts for the current market is that it's, it really seems to be favoring having the morning be mainly short biased and then having the afternoon be mainly long biased. So try to adapt your trading to that current market sentiment until the market changes again. It will change again. It will become a strong market again, but right now the main goal is just to survive until we can thrive later on when the market's bullish. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit the like button. And if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button next to that. If you have any questions on this content, leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to help you out. I want to give you guys some more free upfront value just because that's the type of person I am. There's a link down below for a free trading workshop you get a video course, a complete video course on the basics of trading and also my top three PDFs of how to trade. There is a, my free ebook, how to day trade every single morning, my personal trading checklist that I use every single day to trade and also my top 10 trading strategies that I use and my members in TradeBuddy use to trade the markets and make profits. So like I said, there's a link down below for that. Check it out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day.